Here's how we save 10 man hours per week. So this product is one we've been making for about seven years now. It's one of our great sellers. And it has a PVC tube. It actually used to be aluminium. So somebody is cutting and capping these 10 hours a week. So here's how we made it a lot more efficient and easier. So let me take you on the journey of how we started and how we're doing it now. Seven years ago, this is how the journey started when we started to use the PVC tube. So we needed to get from long tube to short tube. So what we done, bought this hand tool and this is how we used to cut them. Line it up with the one we'd previously cut and cut it like this. And then cut through it. See the struggle. And then we have the one cut to the right length. Someone would cut a whole batch of them into a box like this. And then the next step would be to take plastic end caps like this and install that on. Put them on like that. Then I'd have to push them on like this with body weight. Sometimes they were tighter and that would create the tube. They'd be doing that for 10 hours per week. I see it as a struggle and a problem, so I stopped and I built this from parts we had lying around in the scrap container. So now we put the tube in and it cuts it. So you can see that was a lot quicker processing a batch and a big box of tubes. And then after seeing the struggle doing it by hand, I made this machine. So we put the cap on gently, put that in, that will push it in and eject it straight into the bin. So a batch process of doing that. And then the evolution was, I wanted to put branding on each of the end caps. So we had a laser machine which could do that, which we're going to go to now. And what we was doing was putting them under here one by one and it would laser engrave. So then I stopped, bought this vibratory bowl second hand on eBay and then 3D printed all this, made this and learned to do Arduino programming electronics to program an order controller. So we quickly show you that working now. So the caps vibrate. And then it goes into the feeder. Once we get another one down there, it activates the sensor. So we're batch processing. But it's quite a specialized piece of equipment. It does take fine tuning. Some days it doesn't seem to work as good as others. So, but we run with this for a year and we've only just stopped recently using it. And now we're gonna show you what we do now. So you've seen the old way. And for the last two weeks, I've been working on this. We, we have made ourselves a modular table workbench, which we're using for all our new cobot robot projects. And then I thought, what do I need to do? One piece flow. So. We've got a cartridge here where we're going to load 17 tubes into and it's going to pick one up, put it in and a designer made this tube cutter. It's going to cut it to exactly the right length, put it in the tube capping machine, which a designer built to, which actually runs very well. And then it will be laser engraved right there. The machine's not arrived yet, but hopefully it'll be here soon. It's on a train in Kazakhstan, believe it or not, on the way here. And it's going to take the cap check it on this sensor which is a color sensor to make sure the cap is there and then it's done it's going to drop it down a chute downstairs because this is going to be upstairs above our packing area right where the action happens so i'm so excited and i can't wait to get it finished and you're going to see it now speed forward in time in use upstairs fully finished so now it's upstairs in action saving us 10 hours of man hours cutting and cupping tube every week and also to know it's one piece flow so instead of cutting the big box of white plastic tubes and then engraving all the caps separately it's doing it one at a time so when it if it was to create a defect the machine will stop the sensors which checks the cap is on over there at the capping station once the two caps are definitely on there it will come over to the engraver which did arrive come through Kazakhstan made it here no problem and set it up as a wonderful machine. And then it drops it into the bin. We haven't got the chute going downstairs yet. That will be another uh, improvement. 
and also we've got safety sensors here you see me I just broke the beam so it stops such an easy system to program and make work like this and it's such an enjoyable project for me as well so we can let you watch this now we're going to speed it up so you can just watch it do a few and just uh, enjoy watching the robot save my people and make their job easier We've incorporated an on-don system, which green and orange means it's running. And like any other machine, when it's red, we have an error. So what it's doing now, we're gonna test our new on-don system. So it's checking for pipes. So if there's no pipes in the system, it will ring our alarm sequence. So it's put the red on-don on, so we can visually see as a problem. And this is our next stage, which we've incorporated into the system just for fun. So it rings the cowbell, 30 seconds and whoever's around or downstairs will hear the bell ringing and come to see what's going on put the tubes back in press start again and it's a wonderful thing so you can see where we got to in this point of our improvement journey and where it could be in a year's time will be completely different so now i challenge you to see the waste in your processes and make improvements